Hawks rebound. Beautifully done, sandwiched between two Port Adelaide defenders. Got up, fingertipped it, and has got a chance from 25 metres out right in front. Took exactly 28 seconds to get the ball that far. Kick number six, John Seaboam. Booted three to date. That makes it four. Great start to Bays in the second half. Eight, six to five, nine. Top action on seven's big league. Well, sometimes football is a very easy game. I mean, uh, the inboard kick from Chris McDermott was in the perfect slot for John Seaboam to hang in the air, take a very clever mark, and finish it off with a great goal. Fine player Seaboam today. He uh, certainly has... Uh, done well from limited opportunities. Four goals out of a total of eight by his side is testimony to the way he's going in this match. Back to the centre now, and uh, the Bay is doing very, very well. Big super carry. Russell Johnston comes off hands now, and uh, plenty of players around the ball. Gee, young Airy worked very hard. He has come onto the ground since half-time. Curtis still playing centre, puts it up forward. Back goes Gibbs. Great judgment. Surprised that O'Brien didn't do something about the ball then. Kernahan. Kernahan has a new opponent in Young Erie. Butterick up high. West in front. No mark paid to either player. West nowhere to go. The handball was indirect. Now Maynard. Alan Stringer. Seabone is on a lead. Alan Stringer will go all the way with this one. Or centre it. He does the ladder. Phelps cuts across. Had a, an opportunity to mark the ball and didn't. It was Hodgman to Marshall it was, and he went onto the left boot and scored a point. The Bays 8-7, Port Adelaide 5-9. Golden opportunity gone begging for David Marshall, who has a habit of uh, pulling those left foot kicks back where they belong, between the big sticks. And that time he uh, just made a slight error of judgment and it didn't quite get the end result of a goal. But a point and a handy point to the knob. 8-7, played Port 5-9. The Bays with the last use of the breeze. It hasn't really affected the game. Stringer, short, the lead of Ginova. Centre wing, Johnson. Anderson runs. Had Leslie, doesn't want him. Kicks long to the half forward line. Murphy. Gee, he's playing a fine game. He's beaten Phillips on the day. Phillips not really happy where the ball was distributed to him either. Donovan just inside the line. The Bays to edge themselves out of defence through Donovan. Check side of the centre line. A high kick going in towards Leslie. West there as well. Over the top came the leap of Butterick, but I think you'll find a free kick for a push in the back. will go to Martin Leslie on half-back flank. 8-7 the Bays. Port 5-9. Leslie to centre wing. Phillips comes in late against three Glenelg players. The thump away comes. Very close to the line. Murphy keeps it in. And does it just a bit too easily then. Port Adelaide not bustling like uh, you'd imagine that they would. Kernahan to half forward. Off hands to Butterick. Butterick just held onto the ball a little bit too long there and thumped it on. Players stack up and umpire will bounce. On the half forward line of the Bays, they lead by 16 points. Having led by 11 at quarter time, 9 at half time. Rowan Smith against Grenvold. He's got the pace. Comes out with a footy. Whips out the long one. Woodlands. He'll need support. Gets clear once. Can't beat Harvey's tackle. And the umpire said play on. Woodlands still in there fighting for the ball. But the umpire will come in and bounce once more inside the half forward line. Woodlands badly needed running support at that time. Couldn't find it. And Harvey's tackle was strong and good. The lights go on at Footy Park. We're going to finish about six or just after. It's probably just a little bit too dark. Phelps over the top row and Smith, the running part of support is John Harvey. He goes out wide and is booted out on the full. And the penalty free kick will go to the other side. Looks like Mark Donovan. Port Adelaide hasn't really played that well today. Donovan kicks in long. West in, uh, comes in late. But it's the man in front, Russell Johnston, who's really controlled the air out there today. And he'll switch tack to Curtis. Airy gives him another lead. May not quite get to it. Yes, he made a lot of yards, uh, Airy, and took a fine mark low to the ground. Well, that's not a good kick. He's booted it out on the full centre wing grandstand side. Port Adelaide have achieved two out in the fulls in, in about the space of 30 seconds on each side of the oval. Airy's first kick came out of the bunker during the half-time break, or at the half-time, to get his first kick for the game. Kernahan centres the ball towards the half-forward line. Back in defence there is Phelps, can't get the ball clear. Or almost Hodgman, that's Geneva. Anderson, Curtis, 
did it well. The running car with him is Geneva through the centre line. Go Port Adelaide. A long one to the lead of Smith. That's beautifully put, Tim Geneva. Smith got the pace to play on. 40 metres out. He just got cold at the wrong time as far as he's concerned. Forward pocket. Mike O'Brien whips out a handball. Phillips ought to kick a goal. Left foot one through. Second for the day. Beautifully done. Kick number four. Goal two. Port Adelaide fight back. 6-9. They trail the base. 8-7. Six minutes into the second half. Well, a great goal by Port Adelaide. They made something out of nothing then. They were just coming forward in twos and threes and finally the ball sat up for them. A hand pass out to Greg Phillips. Forced onto his left foot once again. And strange to relate, both his goals today have been with his non-preferred foot. Uh, he is a great kick with his natural kicking right foot, but uh, isn't renowned for kicking with the, uh, the left. But two goals, good effort. One gets the feeling that Port Adelaide uh, haven't quite run into top gear yet. That uh, They're just simmering away and... Uh, that they could explode at any given time. But then again, the Bays are a pretty good side and they may not let them. Hodgman now at half forward. Phelps in hot pursuit. Hodgman, the little rover, has the chance to pick it up. He's not actually roving today. He's uh, running on the ball with Maynard. It's a bit of a fight on uh, the boundary line between Phelps and uh, Butterick. But Port Adelaide go forward to O'Brien. Darren Smith on a lead. That won't quite get to him, but Darren Smith come out with the ball, though. Or the handball. Now he gets it out, finally. Here's a third go with the left foot from Greg Phillips. Can he kick three with the left foot? He certainly can. He ought to give the right boot away. Five kicks, three goals. Port Adelaide 7-9, the Bays 8-7. A little bit of a four-sec, two goals in the first uh, seven minutes of this quarter. Fiatchi can't get it out. Burring through Curtis. He meets Salisbury head-on when in the movable object meets uh, whatever Curtis from centre field to put the Magpies into attack out comes Smith again he's going to give him a chance Smith gets the leap away thump clear Thompson Stringer left it behind Salisbury saves today runs McDermott into trouble he's still in there Anderson swings it out wide Curtis now Rowan Smith is clear that's the way the ball will go Salisbury can't get him back to Smith he can't get there quickly through Harrison 40 metres out goes for Seven's big lead. And hasn't the crowd erupted all of a sudden? Port Arlooming, as I said before, is uh, the side to beat now. They've hit the front end of the breeze in this third quarter, something I think most people around this ground wouldn't have thought possible. And all of a sudden, they're more than the uh, a point or so in front. Well, out two points in front and doing very well. Three goals in three minutes, Port Adelaide against the breeze. It's all happening for them. Super Carey there, he'll uh, try to stop the tide or stem it. Punch down comes towards Airy. He gets thrown away without the ball. Umpire perceptive on that occasion. Airy's defence side of centre. He'll find Martin Leslie with it. And uh, Leslie's a very attacking half-back player, but the kick is not that good. It goes straight to David Kernahan. 15 metres. I don't blame you, Greg, for the uh, little salute you gave to the umpire. That was ridiculous. It's supposed to give the player time to get back. Off hands it comes. Butterick with a good movement forward over the top Seabone. He's got a chance now. Surely a goal coming up. West will run into the open goal and he kicks his second. Bays back in front. 9-7 to Port Adelaide 8-9. A well-organised goal by, uh, by Jim West then. He waited for the the obvious hand pass over the top from John Seabone, which finally came. It took John Seabone a, 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 a second or two to gain his, uh, gain his footing. Then he popped it over the top to Jim West to uh, make it look easy. And they'll get the front once again, but uh, it's been all Port Adelaide so far in this quarter. And one senses a really uh, rebirth of their, of their football this particular term. A game freeing up. The first half, a low-scoring slot starting to run now. Johnson in ruck against Carey. Johnson gets the benefit of the bounce. Stringer oh, gets a high tackle after he got rid of the footy. Thompson searches for the ball on the half-forward line. Woodlands takes care of him. The handball away is not good. Port Adelaide under pressure there. Marshall, Geneva with him there is Harrison, and the umpire will bounce the ball on the attacking corner for the Bays of the big centre square. 9-7 to 8-9. Players starting to run more freely now. Getting the ball through their half forward lines with method. Harrison goes for the thump to the outer side. And the ball is going to be brought back. And a free kick given to Russell Johnson. I'm not certain what for. But he's got it almost on the half back left flank. Bays by four points. Ten and a half minutes into this third quarter. Phillips, Murphy. 
Mark, no mark taken. The umpire is going to uh, take the ball away from Murphy on the basis that uh, it was a line ball. Phillips in ruck now against Carey. Phillips slams the ball back to centre-half forward. No one there, though. Tackle is on Hewitt, who's now onto the ground, and the kick away there by Grenville. Here's a space. Maynard's in it, naturally enough, and he's going to kick it to the fast-leading Seabay, who comes out and takes the mark. Plenty of opposition there by Stringer, but uh, the kick from Maynard was too good. Very clever uh, placing his body by John Seabone. Whatever happened, would have been a mark or a free kick, one way or the other, he's going to win that ball. Normally a very difficult uh, angle to kick a goal here at Football Park, but uh, if anyone can do it, this angle suits the Seabone kick. He swings it in superbly, through the centre it goes. Five goals, Seabone, a great performance at full forward. The Bays kick away now, 10-7 to Port Adelaide, 8-9. What a delightful pressure goal from John Seabone. Boy, from limited opportunities, the man's now got five goals on the board. Out of his side's ten, so half the score is kicked in, in the goal side of things. And that was a great pass by Peter Maynard, incidentally, that uh, set the goal up. And, well, as Peter just said, they're now ten points in front tonight. Three minutes ago, they were two points behind. Young Paul Stringer, a virtual rookie, having a torrid time against Seabone now. Carey gets the tap, but it's not effective. Players stack up on another bounce. 10-7 to 8-9. The Bays eke out a ten-point lead. That want to halfway through the line of their last use of the breeze. That want a bit of a platform at three-quarter time. Johnson, Rowan, Smith, Geneva. The half forward line using his body well there. Fiatu, but lost the footy. O'Brien through trying to use his pace. Grenfell's got just as much with him. Michael Airy. Grenfell will need support from there. He's got to try to get rid of it. The umpire says line ball. Could have been a little fortunate. The crowd don't like it. And Michael Airy just gave him a friendly tap on the shoulder. He just about broke it. Half forward right tap down. Carey didn't get his hand anywhere near the ball. Stringer through, lost the footy. Players burrow in for it. Geneva comes out with it. Port Adelaide into attack again. Up towards Smith. Gets the leap away. Michael O'Brien, Grenville. Brian down. Through goes Fiatti. Gibbs there too. Tries to get the ball out. Can't. Oh, he hasn't got the footy. Smith gives it to Grenville. It's hard body work there. Play on said the umpire. And out comes McDermott with the footy. The crowd yelling at the umpire some reason in there goes Johnson West in front Michael Airy through but Johnson behind West is being paid the mark and Big Jim is giving umpire Hilton both barrels away they go again through Abernethy hasn't been in the game a lot but uh, he has been out injured Smith on a lead can't take the mark through goes Harvey John Harvey from halfback misses he loved to come down the ground and kick a goal John Harvey but he was offline with that one Port Adelaide 10 now, the Bay's 10-7. Getting a little rugged out there, Graham. Just seems to be more pressure being brought to bear from on players with the ball now, Ian, and it makes the game much more entertaining. Does it ever? Ross Gibbs. Can't ever imagine him flustered. The kick wasn't a good one off the side. Curtis dropped a sitter. Stringer gave it to Donovan. He kicks long, screws that, a ground-covering kick. Woodlands needs running support. He's got a free kick, I don't know what for but he can almost make the distance. Seabone doesn't know which way to go. He's going to kick long. He's put it up very high. It's not a good kick. Seabone against Stringer. Oh, a little gentle nudge there. The umpire's quite happy about it. And off the fingers it goes through for the point. 10-8 the Bays, 8-10 Port Adelaide. Any score's a good score in this game. It's not going to be what you might call a high-scoring game. Port Adelaide a little bit lucky then that uh, from their point of view that the Bays didn't get one. Butterick, McDermott had to get rid of it quickly. Back it goes Butterick again. Now Kernahan, a couple of free players down there for Glenelg in short, but uh, the ball went high. Russell Johnston, or Phelps it was, it was slammed away from that player. It hit Butterick and bounced off him. We really knocked him over, in fact. May have been a legging there, but it's Phelps who picks it up from the Geneva movement. Anderson to Phelps and John Harvey. He uh, appeared to be wanting to play on then, but the umpire is going to give 15 metres. Has to be to the centre of the ground. Airy is there. Hodgman will get there a little bit too late and fails to stop Airy from getting it out. But the handball, not a good one. McDermott intercedes and gets it out there to Hewitt. Hewitt to Kernahan. Here they go again, the Bays. There are free running players everywhere. James West is the target. That's his ball. Having a birthday this quarter, David Kernahan, this side of the ground. Yes, Airy appears to be running... Uh, into the centre and onto the other side of the ground for his kicks. Kernahan staying at home. And uh, Airy 
paying for it. West can kick a goal from there. He is a big kicker of the ball. Slams it through the centre. West now has three goals from seven kicks. Port Adelaide 8-10, the Bays 11-8. Well caught. Been a great fight back after Port Adelaide actually got in front by four points. They're fighting on well. They've got a 16-point break now at the bounce. Johnson's tap away, went to his opponent in Carey. Anderson boots it away, but the umpire's called for a repeat of the bounce. Game is going to finish about 6 o'clock. The lights have gone on in preparation for it. But, gee, there's a big crowd of over 25,000 people and really warming to the task now as both teams go in hard in their bid for victory. Carey hooked back nicely. Abernethy through. Been a little quiet. Marshall. Boyd can't get the footy clear. He's going to get a free kick for hanging on. And Boyd will get it just the check side of the centre line. Clever work then by Boyd as he puts it over to Greg Anderson. Area's running clear, but he's covered well by Maynard. 15 metres in favour of Anderson now as he comes up for his seventh kick. He wants Greg Phillips. He's in front, the big fella. It comes off hands to Rowan Smith, but Phillips again, what a powerful man he is. The umpire is going to bounce it on the edge of the square in Port Adelaide's attacking zone with the Magpies trailing by 16 points. Phillips interfered with Peter Carey then and uh, Big Super is going to take the free kick and he drags it wide towards Hodgman who's out in front of Phelps. <laughs> Phelps just uh, bumped it over the line. He certainly had the reach on him. I don't think there was any doubt where he's going to put it either until he finished up on the first uh, story of Footy Park his own Johnson the Bay Ruckman never got there McDermott through what a strong courageous part caught on the left leg fires in a long one all the same up towards the forward pocket Leslie comes to meet the ball well and takes the mark in the back pocket Johnson at center wing calls for the ball this side he's close to the line Craig Eaford also wants it going for Johnson Carey's right there with him Anderson over the top can't bring it down Kernahan close to the line, cleverly keeps it in, or does he cleverly keep it in, because there he comes out with a footy, ducks the tackle, Harvey, Port Adelaide through the half-four line, out charges Smith, it's going to be short of that player, beautifully marked Ross Gibbs, Jennifer was all over him, Smith was behind him, and he looks like he's got a minor problem, but Mr Super cool gets to his feet to take his mark inside the half-back line. Yes, he looks cool even when he's in pain, Ross Gibbs. He's had a very good game. 15 kicks now. He certainly uh, held Port Adelaide up, but his delivery is also exceptional. What a kick that is. 60 metres. Carey up. Got a long way off the ground. Alan Stringer went through and got a clever handball out. McDermott runs the gauntlet, gets through. There he's down. Way goes Maynard. He's going to centre that. Brilliantly centred by Maynard. Gives the forwards a big chance. Marshall tried to do a Philip Gallagher, and now he's going to get a free kick for a high tackle. Well, he backed into the pack, and uh, he's getting a free kick for a hand over the shoulder. I guess if you put your head down, technically there's no free kick involved, but if you back your head into the pack, I guess then the player about to attack is going to be very careful where he puts his hands. Well, the umpires have obviously been directed um, from the top to play free kicks if there is a slight infringement over the shoulder or anything that even looks high. It uh, does reduce the game somewhat into a into a somewhat soft affair, but there's a goal to Marshall. The Bay is now 12-8, the Magpies 8-10. Well, David Marshall's first goal, he's had a few shots. He certainly has been, uh, the player that hasn't been as effective as he normally is from his wing, but nevertheless a very dangerous person, David Marshall. And uh, he won a free kick there the hard way, and, um, well, some might claim it wasn't so hard, but it was around the neck. Any around the neck is, uh, has got to be earned. Free kick, easy goal. When you back turn into trouble, Graham, quite often you're gone for holding the ball for all money. It was six one half dozen the other. I agree with both of you. Smith, that's a galvanised groin for bench sitting. Phillips to the half forward line. Gibbs charges to meet it. Smith got it out, but the Grenfell. Murphy can't quite. Jennifer through. Port Adelaide into attack again. Curtis waiting for it. Thunk clear by Hazelgrove up towards the half back line. Port Adelaide in attack. Gibbs gets it out, but only as far as the Archie. Gives Smith, that's Darren Tyke Smith, the run of the footy. The big fellow can get that low. Oh, on goes the saddle. That's a non too subtle push in the back, and Darren Smith must take the free kick on the half forward left flank. In fact, he's inside that position. He's about 45 metres out from goal. Kick number six coming up. 
There's been a belated move then. Uh, Bruce Abernathy's gone to the middle and uh, Stephen Curtis has gone to the forward line. Smith has got three. This is not going to make it four. Kerry should mark it. No, he lets Smurphy go and he takes the easy defensive mark unopposed. Murphy it is. A full back. He's played uh, quite well against Greg Phillips at centre half back. The kick's not a good one. Underneath that ball is Anderson and he takes the mark. A couple of Port Adelaide players are, uh, are not match fit yet. Anderson's one of them. Abernethy, naturally enough, is another, and uh, also Rowan Smith. Eight kicks, Anderson. Johnston puts one hand up, couldn't mark the ball. Peter Carey has it like a magnet, but the ball is held in there, and the umpire will bounce it. Yes, I'd agree with that, Peter, that there are a few guys just need plenty of football, and the three you mentioned uh, certainly stand out as players that need plenty of football to uh, get that run in their game. Phillips over the top tries to drag it to Airy, but it was cut off superbly by Kernahan. The speed of Abernethy showing out. Couldn't quite stop him then, Stringer. Abernethy had nowhere to go. He handballed it to Maynard. Stringer goes off like a startled rabbit. Maynard is running alongside of that player. Smith showing plenty of pace. That's Darren Smith for Port Adelaide. West couldn't too grab it. Phelps missed it completely. Craig Ebert fell over and uh, the umpire has given a free kick to him. I hate to say, but I don't think Greg, uh, Jeff Phelps is suited to a half-back flank. I think you might be right. Anderson, left boot, chance at 10 and a half forward. O'Brien couldn't mark it. Phillips went for the thump. Appeared to hurt himself as he went down. Jennifer, Anderson, no one at all moving for Anderson. Couldn't do a thing with that. There might be a lucky bounce here as O'Brien kicks it over there towards Phillips. Or oh, the handball may hurt. Jennifer, no, he picked it up, put it under the left boot. Oh, well done, Jennifer. Very, very neat work indeed. First goal. Port Adelaide, 9-10 to the Bays, 12-8 against Darren Smith having a run on the ball. Johnson's gone to full forward. A lot of arms and legs in there. Very difficult to get the ball out. Umpire Mark Mackey will come in for the rebounds. Darkness starting to close. 23 and a half minutes gone. Unusual time to be playing footy. Great time. Any time's good. Abernethy under pressure there from Maynard. Thompson, Harrison, Smith, Geneva, and John Harvey, and the umpire will bounce once more. 16 points in it, but uh, Port Adelaide going with the breeze in the last quarter, but the breeze is only of any value if you're uh, fresh enough to use it. Quite often if you've gone against it twice, you're not fresh enough to use it the second time round. Darren Smith, Geneva, Phillips, it's in a half forward, always under the ball. Here's a chance now. Curtis appears to be very tired. He's uh, running on courage line at the moment as VRG is at the base of the pack. And uh, I think the umpire might ball that one up. 16 points in it. Peter, I get a, the impression there's a few tired players out there. They're not running as uh, easy as they did before and there's some sucks down. It could be Easter Monday Blues, Daisy. A few Easter eggs. I've got them. <laughs> You never know what the players have been doing on the weekend. Thompson kicks it long up towards Jim West. Thumped away from him by Leslie and uh, out towards the boundary line. And we'll see a throw in in that position. 12-8 to 9-10, moving up on 25 minutes. About to go into time on. Great side here at Footy Park. The lights are on, big crowd, top game. What more can you ask? You're watching it on the sevens, big league. Abernethy there gets the kick away. Close to the line, Thompson searching for it, but that will go out of play, along with Thompson and Rowan Swift. 12-8 plays, 9-10. Past uh, full time now, we're into time on. And the Bays have done it pretty well. They've booted five goals this quarter, although Port Adelaide have got four. Most of those early in the quarter, or three of them. Kicked three in three minutes earlier on. Harvey gets a bit of a push as he delivers. Grenvold has played very well, Grenvold. Uh, for Glenelg coming in as he has and uh, Robbie Thompson hasn't done a bad job either. Neither is that man in the screen. Sorry, that's not a man. Uh, no abiding stuff. I met McDermott when I said the man. She might be his sister. Anderson around the corner. High. Murphy thumps away. Grenvold run down by O'Brien. The handball away is not good. Anderson again. He's coming into the game strongly in the second half. Into Phillips, one to beat. He wants to play on quickly. Curtis now, 35 metres out, steady, pops away. The umpire hardly moves. Goal Port Adelaide. That is Curtis' first kick, number 13, and Port Adelaide fight back to 
10-10, trailing the Bays 12-8. Now there's that man to get involved in that goal, Greg Phillips. He really is playing a fine game in the half forward. I mean, early in the piece, Mike Murphy had him cold. But he's fought back strongly in this quarter to kick two goals himself and have a hand in two others. Once again, his hand pass over the top, set up a Stephen Curtis goal. Gee, he's a good player, uh, Phillips. He always gives a contest as a half forward. He's always there just to be part of the action. And that gives Port a real chance now. Maynard coming off the ground, replaced by Kidney. Carey up, gets his hand to the ball. Stringer got it out, now McDermott to Donovan. Donovan floats one up to centre half forward. Port Adelaide defenders everywhere. Craig Ebert takes the mark. He's got Harvey running for him, uses that player. And Port Adelaide will seek to run it down the outer side. Harvey goes off. Harrison. Back to Harvey. Gee, there are Port Adelaide players running. But it may have stopped just a fraction. Fiat checks and a half forward will take the mark. And he'll get a bit more than that too. Um, <laughs> Ross Gibbs does like the mark from behind, but I don't think there's any way known he was going to mark that one. He was a fraction late. <laughs> About two minutes. Was he ever? See. Fiat could have had a meal by the time he got there. Not an unkickable goal, this, Peter. From no, it's, it's not, Graham, and it's a vital one, too. Gee, a goal here would certainly set the cat amongst the pigeons as he misses. A point to Fiat Port Adelaide 10 11, the Bays 12 8. He really shouldn't have missed the ball as much as he did. That was a very kickable goal. Hazel Grove, Murphy. On the left leg, towards centre wing, not much to kick to. He's going for the safety of the line, although right on it is Stringer. He got the kick away. The umpire ruled that he was out of play in any case at the interchange gate. Stringer got the the, uh, the kick away, and the umpire looking rather well. He's Stringer's looking rather ruthfully back. He thought he was uh, in play, but not to be. 12-8 plays, 10-11. Closing in on three-quarter time now. A score to either side would be handy, obviously. It always is. That might be 15 metres, as uh, Peter Carey gives Dennis area face massage. And another one. No 15. As uh, Darren Smith kicks up to half forward. I think that's a free kick. Abernethy takes off with it. Kernahan's after him. Abernethy spears it into the pocket. I don't think anyone expected that. Not even Abernethy. Oh, here's a chance, Geneva. No, free kick has already been given. And it will go to Ross Gibbs. And I'm not sure why. Pushed in the back. I think. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd don't like it. Maybe predominantly Port Adelaide, but there's a lot of booing going on out there as the ball drops short. Abernethy again, good mark. And Abernethy can almost kick this. If he gets 15 metres, he'll most certainly make the distance. Be interesting the way he marked that ball with his uh, injured hand there, uh, Ian. He certainly favoured it. He certainly did, Peter. I agree with you. Oh, kicks into the man on the mark. Phillips now is going to have to work hard. He headbutts his own player. Geneva and Phillips are down for the count. Gee, that would have hurt. And there's a yike on behind play. Here he's in it as well. And the, and the crowd love it as they go in. There's a little satellite yike. I'm not sure what it's all about. Here he's there. So too is Robin Kidney. Graham Hilton just says now cut it out. I think again the strange thing about it is that Port Adelaide are going to get a free kick. Um, Phillips and uh, Geneva appear to headbutt, one headbutt one. each other. <laughs> but I think the free kick is for a push in the back. In yeah. other words, pushing Geneva into the uh, into the running body there of Phillips. Geneva is about 40 metres out. Might not be able to make the distance into the breeze. He goes for it, but it's holding up. Smith out in front. Oh, what a fuck, Smith. Fine mark. And the crowd agree. Smith has got it. Players get a little afraid. O'Brien, Gibbs, Rowan Smith, Carey, all getting a little excited as the game warms up here at Footy Park. Almost three-quarter time, over 30 minutes gone. Smith could finish up getting 15 metres. And I'd like to see it from that far back as well. Out of the binoculars. Back at the ranch, it's Smith with the ball, I think. Players just sorting out the wounded. It's a vital goal, Ian. A vital goal. Kick number nine. Smith has booted three. That makes it four. Port Adelaide fight back that one straight kick down. 11 11 to 12 8. Game. Port Adelaide fought back brilliantly later in that third quarter to be down by four points, but they're going with a breeze in the final quarter. It is Geneva. Boots them to the half forward line. Grenville there with him in the high tackle of O'Brien. Salisbury as well, close to the line. And he's quite happy to see it go out of play. 12-9 the base, 11-11 Port Adelaide. And now we're joined by David Mackay. 
Thank you, Ian. It's going to be a real test of fitness this last quarter at Football Park. Conditions beautiful for football. Lights are on at Football Park. As Phillips with the tap, gets it down. Curtis with the tap out, went to Geneva. He swung around on the left foot, put it forward to Smith. He's up and he's marked, Big Smith. Well, that's just what they want for Adelaide. The big fella firing at full forward. He already has four goals to his name. And a fifth here would put them two points in front. Once again, Tim Ginova orchestrated that mark by Darren Smith. Eight kick third quarter for Tim Ginova. He really has exploded in this last half. Smith lines him up deliberately. 15 metres out. The angle's small. Kick number 10, goal number 5. Port Adelaide have the lead. And a fine spearhead Darren Smith has proven to be this season. Seven goals last week in the opening game against Sturt. And today on fire again with five goals out of a total of 12 so far. And he's had his stint on the ball on occasions when Russell Johnston has needed a rest. Great player for Port Adelaide and uh, certainly knows where the goals are when he gets the ball. This is a great game at the moment. It's the fourth time today that a goal has been kicked in the first minute of the quarter. Three times by Port Adelaide and once by the Bays. At the centre bounce, Johnson against Carey. Now the moment of truth for the Bays. Can they get back into it? Johnson up. Through goes Smith. Rowan Smith that time gets out a handball. Quickly in Anderson. Salisbury with the lead. Gets it well, no support, or did it well in the end to get it out to McDermott, but he's thrown it to Smith. Rowan Smith, Curtis, out goes Smith again. He's got the lead, got the mark, fine mark. Hazel Grove not within five metres when he first started. Bad mistake by the Bay centre field, and now Smith has got a chance to get two in two minutes and also make it six for the afternoon and put a big dent in the Bay's chances of winning. Darren Smith... 35, 40 metres out, kick number 11 to the lake end, it looks nice, the umpire getting underneath the aluminium, and he's got it, Garen Smith 6, Port Adelaide starting to fire, 13-11, they lead the base, 12-9, top action on 7's big lead. Wow, with the breeze this quarter, Port Adelaide have really exploded, out of the blocks. Quick kick into the forward line by Stephen Curtis, who is a recipient of a hand pass from Rowan Smith, who's had a very quiet day thus, thus far. Uh, said about that goal by Darren, Darren Smith, playing at full forward and doing a yeoman job. Two goals in two minutes, Port Adelaide lead by eight points. In run, Johnson and Carey. Neither got the tap, it went down to Geneva. Port Adelaide are going forward yet again. Fiatchi was in the lead for that ball. He swings around on the left foot, the big wide arc. Chips it in towards full forward. No one home for Port Adelaide. And Ross Gibbs, Mr. Cool, takes the mark. He plays on across ground. Mark Hewitt it is with the ball coming grandstand side. Places the ball wide for Donovan. He stood his ground well and has taken a good mark at centre wing. There's no leads forthcoming from the Tigers. So he decides to go long. Looking up for West. He couldn't gather in the ball. Finally it came Woodlands to Maynard over the top. The runner was Kidney. Kidney can line up the goals. He chips it into the goal square. Dropping back on it there is Butterick and he's put it through. Second goal to Craig Butterick. But that'll go to 13 goals now. Trailing court on 13 goals 11. Well, Graham Collins has brought uh, Rock Rover Peter Mono back on the ground this quarter. He was replaced during the third term. And uh, his hand pass over the top found Rob Kidney, who I think had a shot for goal. But uh, fortuitously, Craig Butterick was uh, making ground, picked it up and popped it through in the one action. A great re uh, return goal by Glenno. Put himself right back into this match. Two points down. Yes, Graham, one they certainly needed and against the trend of play at that time. Donovan has replaced Hodgman, who's gone into the bunker, as the Bays make their bid to stay in the game. They're down by two points. Johnson at the centre bounce against Carey. Bounce favours, or actually McDermott, try to tap it back to Big Super. Jennifer in there barring, now Curtis. Forced out to uh, Maynard. McDermott gets it out wide. Donovan on the left leg, goes to the half forward line. The bodies go in, almost Kidney, Ebert there, down goes Kidney, the umpire rules a push in the back, Ebert not really delighted with the decision, off goes Kidney now, does it well as he fades twice, oh the kick away is a shocker, gives Jennifer a chance, gee he's played well for Port Adelaide, drives long, Donovan the leaper, thumps clear, string up, fine game, needs running support, all dummies well, drives the base into attack, but it's all Port Adelaide, take your pick, there's three of them and Phelps is the one that's nominated to take the defensive mark. Stringer in, had time to lift the eyes and have a look. There were three players there for Port Adelaide, and he put it right in the middle of them. Now Harvey, left half back, goes towards the centre. 
Looking for Anderson and Phillips. It's Anderson who's up and has the mark. See how Phillips blocked the player coming at Anderson. Then great football by Greg Phillips. Yes, Greg Phillips shows tremendous experience. He set up a number of plays for the forwards of Port Adelaide. He has three himself. He's given plenty away. And there's a fine mark back there. To, looks like Grenville. Grenville plays on to Mark Hewitt. They can see it ground the Tigers. Out to McDermott. Anderson's there. Anderson uh, chanced his arm. He took the mark. Now play on. Harrison it is with the ball. He handballs across the top to Geneva, who's got better as the game has gone on. His kick is high, looking for Smith. He's out. He has the mark. It's punched away from him well by Hazel Grove. Now, Kernahan on the left foot, looking for Marshall. Pursued by Abernathy. Marshall, good skills, picks it up, throws out the ball. Scott Hazel Grove, it is running the ball in front of him. Pursued well by Fiachi. He got away the handball, got a left arm around the neck. No free kicks at the umpire. Now he's picked out one going the way of David Marshall. Marshall from centre wing to put the Bays into attack. They're down by two points. Marshall's long kick has been directed out there to Maynard by the looks. Let's have a look when he comes rare. Peter Maynard it is. Still too far out to score. He'll go long. West gives the lead. Just to upset Graham Campbell, he went in short. Coming away with the footy is Abernethy. He goes long. Out in front of Phillips, a nice half volley. Infield is Curtis, chances his arm, Smith will clear. If the ball sits for him, he's in business. Left full forward pocket has time to look. It's all Bay players. Got to concede back to Rowan Smith. Darren Smith, 30 metres out, closing. Heads for goal, puts it through. Brilliantly done, Port Adelaide. Kick 12, goal 7, Port Adelaide kick clear. 14 11, plays 13 9. Oh, what a play. Puck play by Darren Smith and Rowan Smith. The Smith, the Smith combination then set up that goal, but I don't like players conceding ground. And Darren Smith came back downfield about 15 metres to Rowan Smith. He knew what he was doing. He only did it to receive the hand pass back. Rowan Smith popped it over to Darren Smith, who kicked his, what, sixth goal for the game. Do you want a performance in three in this quarter, if you don't mind? He has been a real powerhouse at the forward end of the ground for Port Adelaide today. This game has turned into a crackerjack on Sevens Big League. The Magpies have the lead. It's a slender eight-point margin, however, as Russell Johnson gets the tap down. Carey gathers the ball in. He couldn't get the kick away, neither could Stringer. Johnson off the ground, intercepted well by Maynard. Forward go the Tigers, but who's there for Port Adelaide? None other than Big Phelps. Doing what he does best, taking marks overhead. Well, he's played at half-back today. He's had smaller opponents much quicker, but he hasn't done a bad job as even burst his way through the centre, looking towards centre-half. Oh, Gibbs is up and a big mark to Ross Gibbs. Mark of the day. Well, he's claimed it. You might be right, Graham. Mark of the day. Mr. Cool. He now likes to play on. Out wide to Donovan. They need to go more direct, the Tigers. They have the deficit, and they're kicking into the breeze. Donovan out wide. Up went to Stringer. He gathered the mark in. Now plays on. They're wasting no time, the Tigers. Forward he goes on the lead. Looked like Woodlands. He couldn't gather in the ball. Geneva was hit high and will receive the free kick. What a last half Tim Geneva's had. He's been dynamic around the packs. Has he ever? Puts it out for Curtis. Anderson. He'll lead her. Gibbs can't make the distance. Now Phelps. Fight on behind play. Anderson and Gibbs goes up towards Smith. This time he's underneath the footy. At the back of the pack there. Hewitt can't. Darren Smith again barring in his Scott Salisbury or is it? No, it's David Grenville at the bottom of the pack. Comes up not really smiling, but he's done well for the Bays. Darren Smith and Tim Ginevra are looming as the match winners of this game for Port Adelaide. 14-11 plays 13-9. Port Adelaide in attack on the edge of the square. Carey against Smith. Carey gets the tap away looking for McDermott. Back there, Hazel Grove. Now Salisbury on the left. Goes out wide. I think he's put out on the full. Michael Airy was going to get a play one or the other. Comes back in field. No one on Ginevra. Loose checking. Got to work. And Ginevra can have a shot from goal from 40 metres out. He's going for Smith. Gives him a chance. Can't quite get there. Hazel Grove fades well. The kick back is a shot. Straight back to the Port Adelaide ring of confidence. And puts it back off the boot. In towards Curtis. Down he goes. And the umpire's given a free kick. McDermott unhappy. But the Bay's starting to panic in defence now. Becoming frustrated. And a big chance now for Curtis to kick another goal. He's booted one. But as Graham Campbell told you earlier, he's been taken out of centre. He's been put uh, into the offensive spot. And now he has a chance for his second goal. He's actually ruck roving off the half forward flank, uh, a position not unfamiliar to Stephen Curtis. He played that role in, in Perth, for East Perth, in quite a number of years. Port by eight points. Curtis 40 metres out. It's a nice looking kick. Port Adelaide by 14 points. 
starting to move away. 11th kick, Curtis, second goal. Port Adelaide looking good at the 11 minute mark. 14 11. They lead 15 11, correction. They lead the base 13 9. Sign of. This is Carey. Carey it was with the tap. Curtis for Port Adelaide got the kick. It went wide to the wing, however. Maynard there for the Tigers has a bounce. A real excitement reaching over this game. Maynard with three bounces. Goes on to the left foot forward. Again, no one home for the Tigers. Is up as Big Phelps and he's marked. Phelps wastes no time. He plays on. Has a bounce. This game's turned into a beauty. Crowd at Football Park. 25,000 people enjoying the spectacle. Rowan Smith was underneath that one. He couldn't mark it. Now Gibbs with the ball. Plenty of time. Finally ran himself into trouble. He doesn't do that often. McDermott with the ball tackled by Harrison, not in possession. He plays the ball in front of him, however, then finally hit by Rowan Smith, and he'll receive the free kick. Players getting a little bit excited down there on the boundary line. And why wouldn't they be? There's 14 points of difference. This has been a crackerjack game. McDermott taking his time to get up. He'll need to get on with it. Not only get on with it, they'll be more direct than base. Well, they have had a, a chance to sort of uh, go into attack. They've sometimes gone at angles, right angles to the game just to retain possession. The deal is now they've got to get to their full line the score. Tenth kick, McDermott goes towards the half forward line. The base need a goal, and they need a quick, big flight. Jim West, Anderson against Kidney. Anderson wins out, and the Port Adelaide fans won't be happy about that just as he's about to escape. Umpire Mark Mackey calls for a bounce. Right on the attacking corner of the square for the Bays. Johnson up, played well. Fiatchi to the half forward line. Leading in the race as Phillips makes a metre. Can't get the half volley. Grenbold for the Bays. Kicks out wide. Looking out there for Woodlands. Backing into it. Harry did it well. Curry's got a lot of courage to mark the ball. Centre half back. The running player out there is Phillips. Comes back inside to Leslie. Leslie onto the boot quickly. Up towards Phillips. Murphy's there. Who's waiting for it? Donovan lost it. Quickly it's got some Jenner. Jennifer Curtis hooks around the corner, one on one, Hazel Grove could bounce through, Smith's got a chance, keeps it in play, throws it over there to O'Brien, but it's gone through the goal line, and one point results. Yes, that looked like a very, very promising attack by Port, but uh, the long kick just landed virtually in a non-scoring position, so to get a point out of that was a pretty good effort. Hazel Grove brings the ball back into play, looking for Gibbs, he's found his mark. It's a very safe overhead mark, Ross Gibbs. A good disposal of the ball. That one's no exception. Although chipping in there was Harrison. Intercepted on Marshall. McDermott with the kick away, going forward. The ball sits for Woodlands. He's in with a chance. He can line up the goals. Instead, he decides to go short. The running player is stringing. He'll handball over the top. He dummied it. Now onto the left foot. He goes goal with bound, but it's offline. And three for one behind. So a chance gone begging for the Tigers. What a strange set of uh, circumstances then confronted Alan Stringer. I thought he handballed himself in the finish. Well, he did. <laughs> well, he did. I don't know that he meant to, Graham. But uh, it might have cost the Bays dearly. They badly needed that goal to get back in the action. They're down by 14 points. A crowd of 25,312 enjoying a brilliant game of footy. Stringer at centre wing. Hewitt wasn't on the move. Had to kick quickly to the half-forward line. Butterick leaks very early unsuccessfully Harvey the tackle is put on there Harrison it looks like they're at the bottom of the pack and the umpire coming in for the bounce once more desperate work by both sides there's not much in this game plenty of time to go we're only at the 14 minute mark of the final term so there should be at least another 15 or 16 minutes of play John Harvey with the tap probably the first one of his career McDermott it was with the kick forward under it was Maynard spoiled by Leslie now Abernathy back in defense beautiful kick towards the center Aries there for Port Adelaide. He couldn't get a hand to it. Now bursting his way through is Donovan. He can, Donovan, he can line up the goals. That's the way he goes. Is it true? He's nailed it. Donovan's first goal. The now good bunch to 14 goals, 10, 94. Trailing Port Adelaide, 15, 12, 102. And there's the unfamiliar side of Mark Donovan. Plays all his football in defence, or has played all his football in defence at the base, kicking a goal on the run. A great goal by the young fellow. He came downfield, streamlined the opposition, took possession of the ball and popped it through like he's been doing it all his life. And I can assure you he hasn't. I'd say that'll be about his second goal at league level. The Tigers fighting on. They're not done yet. What a ripper. 15-12 plays 14-10. At the bounce once more, the men that have done most of the work during the afternoon. Johnson. A wrong correction. It's not Kerry. It's West on this occasion. Kidney ducks the chutney but gets the kick away. It's a floater. The bounce would have turned. Maynard needs to sit on the left leg. Gets caught but gets the kick away. The umpire goes galloping. Oh, brilliantly done, Craig. Even oh, Peter Maynard absolutely livid that he didn't get a free kick for a push and a second shot at goal. 
Goal there would have been very handy. They now trail by seven points. Phelps with the ball, has a bounce. He's chancing his arm. Carey in pursuit, a lumbering Giants. He pushes the ball forward, looking for Phillips, but intercepting as Ross Smith has had a, Ross Gibbs has had a magnificent final term. This will be kick number 20 for Gibbs. Been one of the Tigers' best today. He pushes the kick forward, well shepherded by Phelps as Johnson took the mark. Big super Carey didn't have a chance at that one. Johnson forward, looking for Phillips at centre-half forward. Players collide, coming through as Curtis, who sells the dummy well, now shoots out the handball to Anderson. Anderson has Smith on the lead, that's the way he goes, he's found him. Not to mention Stephen Curtis is a good glass quarter also, he's been uh, the architect of many moves forward by Port. Now Darren Smith has seven goals. That's mark number seven. Goal here would give him eight. It's offline, however, it's drifting around just to the left and through for one behind. And that's Darren Smith's first behind of the day. So seven goals, one is personal talent. What a great performance, eh? And a guy, as I mentioned earlier, who's had some stints on the ball today, to kick seven goals while he's at full forward has been a marvellous effort. Still only eight points to difference. Marshall from Gibbs. Good footy. Super's exhausted. He had to chase Phelps upstream, and uh, he did it the hard way. Stringer, not the most popular person at Footy Park at the moment with the Port Adelaide crowd. Gets the kick away. He's played very well, however. McDermott all left it behind, Johnson didn't, gives a chance, Erie can't quite get there, Curtis again, with down a long run, Anderson, if he gets it, he's right, heads for goal, 30 metres out, sends it from the way, it's home, Port Adelaide's got a big one on the board, 16-13, Anderson's first, lead the base, 14-11, great action on Sevens Big League. What a magnificent hand pass to Stephen Curtis, the man I was talking about some uh, half a minute ago. He really has become an architect in this last quarter, uh, and he's fought back from adversity because he was down the drain at half-time, what he's doing down the gun barrel of uh, getting run over by Alan Stringer in the centre of the ground. Since going onto the ball as a ruck rover, he has really come into this match and provided great support around the packs for, for his team. They lead by five, by uh, 14 points, Port Adelaide. They trail by four points at three-quarter time. They've scored five goals this term to the Tigers, two. Here he tried to burst his way through. Rowan Smith, the handball on to Geneva. geneva has been a top player today. Out wide goes the kick. O'Brien couldn't mark it. Now finally it's left to Hazelgrove to defend for the Tigers. His kick, however, is not well placed. And John Harvey at centre wing has the mark. He elects to go short. On the lead was Anderson. Should have played on. Well, he had the opportunity to, Graham. You're correct. He'll kick this. Well, he is a magnificent kick. I don't think he can kick a goal from there, Ian. He has a two-goal breeze at his back. Perhaps even for Greg Anderson, the distance might be a trifle long. He's lobbed it right in the goal square, however. Up for the big markers, Greg Phillips and the big fellas taking it. Now, Greg Phillips has three goals to date, all with his left boot. Remarkable achievement by the big fellow. Playing at centre-half forward, and he reminds me of Neil Button of Norwood. The way he stands his ground. And that really has put the critics back in their box that said Greg Phillips can't play forward or centre. And I think I might be one of them. Well, he's made you eat your words, Graham. Not really. I just said at one stage I thought he'd be better served to play at centre-half back because that's where he's learned his football and become a dominant force. But, uh, boy, gee, boy gee, he's been a reason, one of the reasons for the guy uh, a strong hold in this game today. And Phillips has played a bottle of goal number four for him. The first one he's kicked with his right boot. And Port Adelaide now go to 16 go 17 goals, 13, 115, leading Glenelg 14-11, 95. Lesson to be learned for Coach Russell Eber today is uh, Jeff Fox has now gone to a back pocket playing on the bigger fellows. He's really been a force this last quarter as well. On a half-back flank, he's like a fish out of water. He needs to play on, uh, on taller people because he's such a big fellow himself. He doesn't have to concede pace uh, to little blokes. And for the first three quarters of this match, that's what he was asked to do. And uh, this last quarter, he's become, a, well, as I said, a dominant force from the back pocket. Been a great fight back by Port Adelaide. 20 minutes gone, but they've come from behind down a quarter time, half time, hit the front in the third term, then lost it, but they're finishing on with a wet uh, feather now. Anderson again, a high one, heaves up towards Darren Smith, two on one, and he's got it! Plays on quickly, open goal, coming up, and it could be game, set, match! Eighth goal, Darren Smith, wonderful performance, kick number 14, the Magpies 18-13, the Bays 14-11. Set and match, and Port Adelaide went on to uh Register a very good victory there. 20 goals, 16 to Glenelg, 15, 11. Darren Smith booted eight for the Magpies. Phillips, four. And for Glenelg, Seabohm got five. And James West booted four. After the game, Ian Day caught up with coach Russell Evert.
Russell, a magnificent second half. What fired Port Adelaide? Well, our, our first half, uh, as you said, uh, wasn't good. And uh, I reminded the lads of, of why we were here and why we'd given up an Easter weekend. And uh, they certainly weren't performing uh, as if they wanted to win the game. And uh, we were second to the ball. We weren't alert. We weren't hitting in hard enough. And uh, that was really the message at half time. And they came out and did all those things and played like uh, I expect them to play. A lot of players lifted, in particular Greg Phillips. Now, you've had your critics for putting him at centre-half forward. He answered all those critics with four goals and a brilliant performance. Yes, well, really, uh, critics are there, I suppose, to, uh, to mouth off a lot. But uh, I've put the side together as, as I uh, wanted, and uh, I want Greg Phillips at centre-half forward because he, uh, not only the possessions he gets himself, but the number of players he brings into the game and the avenue he gives us to goal, and the confidence he gives to the, uh, the Darren Smiths and the uh, players in front of him uh, is value to the side. So I'll play players where I want to play them and the cr critics can do what they like. Russell, you're obviously very happy with the performance. Real happy. Uh, last week was a good effort, win by 11 a bit, and today I think it was close enough to six goals against the Premier side from last year. And, yeah, our lads are, are working hard and are now reaping the benefit. Congratulations. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, I, I don't know whether I should just run away and jump in the lake after that. Well, uh, I, I don't know. I think that Greg Phillips earlier in the year wasn't playing as well as uh, at centre-half forward as Russell would have liked him. And I know that Greg Phillips was a little bit concerned about his form at centre-half forward too. But he is certainly playing a little bit better now there, Russell. I'd agree with that. But uh, I was impressed with Greg Phillips today. I know that Ian Day was, and he had this to say about Greg Phillips after the match. Port Adelaide champion Greg Phillips wouldn't have kicked too many goals during his illustrious career. Maybe that's because he played most of that career in defence. Today he kicked four goals at centre-half forward in a brilliant performance, but would you believe three of those goals were with his left foot? Yeah, I think someone said during the call that he should give his right foot away because his left foot was working so well, but uh, it was a very good performance by Port Adelaide, Graham. Uh, uh, some of their lesser lights, use that in inverted commas, no player should really be called a lesser light, no. but players that you, you don't sort of recognise as great players are playing well for Port Adelaide. Well, they are, Pete, and yet the big guns did it today, I feel. I mean, if Tim Jennifer can be called a big gun these days, he really is a snappy rover, does all the things I, I like to see from a little fellow around the packs, and finishes his game off with good disposal. He was a great player today, Jennifer, and uh, I gave him top marks for Port Adelaide. Number one player, just in front of Darren Smith, the, uh, the great full forward display he put on today it was worth going a long way to see. How do they do it, Port? Honestly, they had, they had Tim Evans for so many years. Now they're bobbed up with, with Darren Smith, who really should be something to watch for the whole year. He could be the state full forward, and uh, Rudy Manamaker might have something to say about that. But, you know, and well, Stephen I, Nichols. Well, Stephen, <laughs> why not Stephen Nichols, of course? But uh, he was a great player, as was Greg Anderson. We mentioned him during the course of the, uh, the commentary there. Greg Phillips after half time was superb. Uh, Russell Johnston. Big man all day, taking marks around the ground. And Stephen Curtis's last half was great. He was beaten early by um, Alan Stringer, and Ross Gibbs also was a good player for Glenelg. Yeah, Glenelg did have some good players, actually. Uh, they weren't disgraced today, Glenelg. They put up a very good...